DJ. <laughs> All right, give me a moment. I need to get back into my my spiel. She's like hearing me in the other room, but she's not. Thank you very much for that. Yes, yeah, so I had a moment there. You just guys, you just witnessed. We're not all perfect. Okay, so let me get back to this. Um, trying to find where I left off. So some of you guys know a little bit about Nurses Against Violence. Some of you guys that don't. And I want to welcome you to our our page. I want to welcome you to the world that we have built. It hasn't just been myself. It has been all of the members that you see inside of the Nurses Against Violence support group. Um, it is essential. It is absolutely fundamental that we all join together in this fight that we call incivility, bullying, the BS of nursing and healthcare as we know it. When I decided to found Nurses Against Violence back in October of 2017, it was because I was being silenced. I was being told that I would not be allowed back on the floor, even though that I was still per diem. I had achieved my master's in nursing education. And when I achieved my master's in nursing education, I wanted to be able to have a little bit of, I'm sure some of you guys out there know how it is. You don't want just one of one thing all the time. You want a little bit of a variety. You wanna feel like you're, you're giving back to the next generation of nurses. So when I got my, my curriculum frameworks, I'm sure some of you guys have, are out there work in Florida. You know, I was working with LPNs at the time and, and I couldn't find anything in the RN frameworks and in reference to acute mental health and substance abuse. What do we have right now? We have a huge problem that's, that's affecting every single one of us, even with COVID, even before then, when nurses were, you know, getting addicted, having to, you know, feeling like they could just take a substance or a drink when they get off work and it's all over with. That stuff piles up. So Nurses Against Violence Unite started because I was being silenced because I could not work on the front line at that point. I got back on the front line, we'll just say that, but I needed, I needed the ability to be able to talk to nurses and get data from nurses that were actually had their foot in the hospital working as staff. It didn't matter that I was taking uh, uh, students to clinical. It didn't even matter. It mattered to me because I wanted this to be real. So Nurses Against Violence Unite, I was wearing a mask, so I'm feeling like the little fuzzies all over my face, so I apologize if I look like I'm picking. Um, when I would take students to the floor, they would see things. After I would teach them, they would see the things that I was describing in it, and they're like, oh, I understand now. It was so important when I was having a conversation with the newish grad that was working on a med surge floor, and she says to me, I don't do mental health. That to me was disturbing because there's more mental health on med surge units than there are probably throughout the whole hospital. There's people you don't even know that have mental health issues that you're working with and that just all of a sudden they get irritated enough and they haul off and smack you. I mean, you just never know who's a mental health patient because the mask could be the smile and underneath could be the crumbling person. So, when I, I needed that data, I needed to have people on the ground. I needed to have people that I could identify with and make this, make this something big. So October, 2017 is when Nurses Against Violence Unite, absolutely JJ, was founded. Shortly after I made it a registered trademark and we have been going strong not nonstop since then. We don't have 100,000 members. We don't have all of these numbers that other groups do because it is hev heavily moderated. What do I mean by that? That means that Ms. Dunbar can come to the page and say what she needs to say without being criticized. 
that means that Scott can say what he wants and not have to worry about somebody saying something to make him feel like less of a person. It means that you have the freedom to say how you feel without being criticized in a negative manner. There's always criticism. Criticism is always welcome. That's how we grow. But when it comes down to making somebody feel horrible inside and adding incivility, that's where we draw the line. So we've been building that, that culture with Nurses Against Violence Unite. It is not necessarily about, hey, I want your money. Join me for $291 a year. And I'm going to give you CEUs. And if you want to take them, okay, great. And we're going to have things that are not meaning that are meaningless to you. Because right now you're getting punched in the face by Mr. Smith. What does that have anything to do with anything except for something needs to be said, something needs to be done, and you need to be heard. Nurses Against Violence Unite is an idea set. It is something that you can feel proud of, that you could be heard. We are in World War III right now, guys. We've been for waves, fighting it with needles and vents. This is a problem, a huge problem, because every day we have nurses leaving the floor because they've had enough. They can't take working short staffed. Why are they working short staffed? Isolation, that could be one thing. But more times than not, just like one of the staff members that I was working with just a, a few days ago said, I have COVID and I was told I had to come to work. I will never tell you where I'm at right now because I believe that wherever I go and I work, I don't want people to be put on, you know, in the spotlight in reference to make them feel funny or anything like that. That's not the idea of this whole thing. The idea is to get in there, find out what the problems are and fix it. What are we fixing when we're telling our staff members that even though you have COVID, you can put on your device and you can go ahead and go to work when you're feeling horrible. But yet the unvaccinated nurses are told that they have to leave and they're fired. Is that a double standard to you? This proves that you know, this isn't about vaccination or unvaccinated. I'm talking about staffing. I'm talking about the foundation and mental well being of nurses, the physical well being of nurses and frontline healthcare staff. When we are telling nurses that they can't come to work because they refuse to get vaccinated, yet we're telling, we're telling uh, staff members they can come to work if they're COVID positive, as long as they're not symptomatic. That's a double standard. I was outraged when I heard this. I was very mad. So what do we have here? We have a pile of actually a huge, massive Italian pot for sauce. You know, the pot, the, the, we have PTSD, we have addiction, we have nurses leaving the floor, we have all of this mixed into this big, gigantic pot. And we wonder why and wonder where our nursing organizations are. I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. But I will tell you that Nurses Against Violence has been around since 2017. We have not stopped except for a short period of time when I was trying to finish my clinical rotation, when I was getting my issues as far as uh, incivility towards myself resolved. And so I could focus on the goal. The goal is to be non, be unstoppable for our organization. I got my psychiatric nurse practitioner for our organization to, to further and to solidify the problems that we face. I want you to know that you're worth it. You are absolutely worth it. And not anybody at your work, at home, nobody could tell you otherwise because you're special. We have nurses that are leaving the floor because it just out of school because they don't have anybody to mentor them on the floor. Please summons the strength if you can.
if you bark at somebody, come back behind them and say, please know that I did not mean that. I am just in a bad place right now. Up here, do you want a soda? We are going to bark at people. It's nature. We're not perfect people. But I will tell you this. Ever since growing up in nursing, since I was 16 years old, starting out as a nurse's aide helper for 11 years and four years as an ER tech while going to nursing school, finishing my LPN, working as an LPN for four years and then an RN since 2010. I have done nothing, nothing but hustle, finding out the holes that we need to address with Nurses Against Violence. Now you hear a lot about advocating, you hear a lot about awareness, but what about the education? What is going on with the education that you, I talk about all the time? Well, this is a part of it. We all know that there's a problem, but how are we going to fix it? I have been very loud with the fact of mental health, there's a mental health crisis. Have we learned about a lot of that stuff in nursing school? More times than not, no. Is it pertinent? Yes. Self-preservation is absolutely paramount right now. A lot of us are not taking advantage of that. Hey, April. April, I know April from years ago, right? I don't remember. April, tell me. I don't know if you're on here, but tell me. Did we, you were one of the students, right? Or were you one of my coworkers? I'm looking on here. I think that, I think you're one of the students. So, but I want you to know that the double standard is not okay. Yep, self-care, absolutely. You student, April? Yes. I remember, I remember. So sometimes with all the things going on, I'm just, I'm so proud of you. I do remember you. So I, I didn't forget you. I just could remember which, which way I was going with that. Um, I am so proud of my students. And if they are listening, I want you to know that, of course, like anybody on the page, please get in touch with me if, if you ever have an issue. Um, it is very important that you feel like you are, you are heard and that, you have, <laughs> and that you have a voice. So Nurses Against Violence Unite in a Summation has been around for almost, I don't know, what is it, almost five years? 19, 20, 21. 22. So October this year will be five years. Now, how long does it normally take bamboo to start, start lifting off? Can anyone tell me? From when bamboo is planted until it sprouts, how long does it normally take? I want to see if somebody can come up with the answer. And if you do come up with the answer, hey, Colleen, uh, if you come up with the answer, I'm going to send you stickers. I don't have the stickers with me, but they look like this and you can put them on your, your drink, which I need some water. All right. So we are registered trademark. We have, we are in how many countries did I count? 10 or 11 countries. We have people all over the place, right? But what about three months? I was told five years. Can anyone verify that for me? Five years. I wanna see that, but anyway, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep looking. Hey everybody. Um, so what do we have? So I'm gonna go over and it, probably the next webinar, I'm gonna talk about the levels of trauma that people face when they report a problem on the floor. It goes to about like 10 to 13, sometimes 15 levels of victimization and that's uncalled for. So how do we fix that? What I've been showing you all these years is the gaps, the gaps of things that we can, we can fix on our own in our own environment and continue and trickle it out. This isn't about Sandy wanting $291 a year. This is about Sandy giving back to the profession, giving back to my peers, being there for my peers. I want everybody to do that. Because right now, as a doctorally prepared, postdoctorally prepared nurse, still on the floor, I'm trying to give back. I'm trying to do my best. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be, 
because I got my, my, my nurse practitioner now. But regardless, I'm going to do the best that I can to find out what the holes and the gaps are of the education. And I'm gonna start going to nursing schools and start promoting the education piece because we need to learn how to protect ourselves. We need to know how to change the way that we talk, not only to ourselves, but also to our patients. It's, it's the beast, okay? We are going through so much, so much just like shoved in our faces. What do you do? It's not about saying you're doing a bad job. It's not saying that at all. It's saying that this should have been fundamentally in the nursing curriculum since the very beginning. So if we can't fix the nurses now, we can at least be there for the nurses, right? We can be there and love them and care about them because that is vital for our, hopefully our profession will, will grow. Because right now it's not, people are leaving because they don't feel supported. They don't believe, people are not believing who, who is saying what on the floor. See, my report of threatening sexual harassment and I was terminated. Retaliation, reprisal for, for standing up and saying something that happened. So if you have a pen, if you want to rewind, if you want to do any of that after this webinar, I'm gonna give you some, air, some things that you could do to protect yourself and to report. Are you ready? OSHA, seems like a joke, but they actually do report, they do follow through with their reports. May not be tomorrow, but they actually follow through. You need to have your timeline, and I could help you with that, your timeline of events, dates, times, witnesses. You need to have, and you can do it anonymously if you choose right? Um, but you want them to get back to you. So I would think that that would be kind of important. If the nurse is giving you a hard time and is calling you an incompetent, you know what, you know what, or saying or making you feel like a piece of dog crap, and they're not apologizing, and it's continuing, and it's a pattern, and it's unprofessional, and nobody is doing anything about it, and you've been following the chain of command, there's nothing wrong with saying that you need to report them because if they're gonna be like that to you, how are they gonna be treating a patient? Number three, equal opportunity, what is it EEOC? Whatever that is, what is it? Equal opportunity, I don't know, e EEOC lawyers. Again, you need to have your timeline, dates, times, witnesses, events that happened, don't just make it one event. You need to have a timeline because if you're just going to report one thing and it's egregious behavior, you need to have subsequent events, right? And it needs to be something that like a uh, nurse was witness, nurse uh, A was a uh, witness turning off your pumps and not telling you about it. And this is a pattern. People make mistakes, okay? And it does, that it is a problem for the patient and you could get in trouble for that if you're, you know, you don't want to get in trouble for that. So number three, <clears throat> equal opportunity employer. Uh, opportunity, I don't know. Who's going to, there you go. So you want to get a hold of them. It's a lawyer and you still want to have your timeline, date, times, witnesses. Your uh, timeline uh, has to be of events that are occurring, okay? EEOC. <clears throat> Thank you, JJ. So definitely very important. I said OSHA, which sometimes people think that's a joke and it's really not. You also have, what was the, what was the second one? That was the nursing board, if you have to, right? If it's egregious and the bullying will not stop, you need to have a timeline. If you think that you're, if you're being, um, I just want you to think of the patients at that point, because there have been some, there have been some nurses that have not done adequate care, adequate care, and it's been ongoing and it's caused harm to the patient, such as bed sores. And then they'll be coming over to you and they could be calling you a piece of crap or you know, making your job a living, you know what? That nurse, you know, that might be important to say something because for the patient's sake, yes, you have thick skin, but your skin is just so thick enough, right? Because we're talking about your brain, right? Do you deserve that treatment? No. Because if that person can treat you like that, 
and so can the rest of administration, right? So <clears throat> you need to have the mindset to make yourself not feel guilty that it's about patients. How would the patients be cared for if they're being treated so poorly? Um, I also want you to look at, hold on a second. No, I don't got COVID, I'm sorry. Um, next thing I want you to look at, whoever will listen. Whoever will listen to your to what's going on with you. If you wanna do a webinar with me, I'll be happy to do a webinar with you. We can keep you anonymous. We can, you know, dress you up. You could wear a Jason mask. The important thing here is that you feel like you're hurt, that you feel like somebody is going to stand up for you. And I have, in some cases, I have taken these, taken things even farther. And I've gotten a hold of some lawyers. I've gotten a hold of people I've networked and I've met up with several people that have helped these certain nurses to be able to build their case and move forward. I'm sorry, my throat. No, I'm not sick. I'm practically screaming. That's the way I talk. Okay, <clears throat> so we are going to start having more advertising. I am looking for people to help me with Nurses Against Violence Unite. We have a very small behind the scenes group, extremely small but it's every single nurse. We have over post reaches of like 250,000 people at times. One of those people, if they told one other person to join, how big would we possibly be? I'm not asking for money. What I'm asking for is exposure for our cause. Our cause is to protect you guys. Here's another thing that I'm going to be implementing and I'm not going to be charging, okay? is going to be behind the scenes, behind the scenes webinars. I'm gonna be doing one, one a month for free to have people come on and talk about the issues that they're going through. You could be anonymous, but I would want to know who's on, right? Because I can come back and I could say, hey, listen, I wanted to follow up with you. If there was something, I want you to talk to me about it because I don't want you going through your life feeling that your your situation is nothing. Maybe there's something I can help you with, or maybe I know somebody that can help you. This is my give back. I give a lot back. And I want every single person that watches this to please do the same. Because it's, it's important. This is what nurses do. So we're going to have one month, one time a month, we're going to have like a group support on the back end. It's going to be only through Zoom. It's not going to be online. It's just going to be us. But we're also going to still have our webinars that are going to be on the front end that you're seeing right now, where we can have people come together, like some of the folks that have been saying things in the chat, to talk about the things that are going on with them. I also want you to know that I appreciate you more than you even think I do. I've had people tell me that they've had lunch talking about that they met on Nurses Against Violence Unite. We're not a dating service. We're not a dating service. But what we are, are people helping people get together and to be able to change their circumstance at work, to change the, the, the environment. That is what we are here to do. And I want you to join me because you are important, you are vital, and you're necessary, every single one of you. So I wanna thank you very much for joining me tonight. I'm sure there's something that I forgot to talk about, but if you ever find anything, any articles that are pertinent to our, our cause, please post them in the support group, and I will be happy to look them over. Uh, thank you. I will be happy to look them over and approve them. We do not do solicitation, we do not, promote other groups. What we do is promote our idealism of changing the status quo, changing our environment and eliminating violence in healthcare. Because without knowledge, the things that we talk about and the things that we will learn about together will change the face of healthcare literally. So I wanna thank you again tonight. 
it's Wednesday night. We're going to try to do it every Wednesday night at 7, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you and have a wonderful week and make everything awesome happen. All right, have a good night. Bye.